The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this episode are that of the guest and host and do not necessarily reflect the values of sponsors or other associated organizations. Welcome to the Parental Compass presented by Family Education and Support Services. I am your host, Bobby Williams. Please hit that subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening on. You'll get notified every week when we drop the next episode. Speaking of next episodes, hope you're ready for the next episode. We want to hear what topics you are interested in us talking about. So leave a comment if you're on a platform that lets you leave a comment or send me an email at bobby at familyess.org. We want to hear what you have to say. Today we are doing part two in our series on step parenting. We're going to be speaking with Julie Jagger. Julie is a parenting coach and teacher and is also part of a blended family with six children, full range of ages. So we are gonna hear about the highs, the lows, the challenges, the joys. We're gonna get into it all. Let's check it out. I had two 18 year olds and his daughter had just turned 13 and each each one of the kids kind of felt like they were the dominant in the household. So, you know, the classic arguments over even just simple things like, what are you going to make for dinner? Uh, we're going to have a family game night or even a movie night. And the kids would not necessarily agree. Our three younger kids were, they really liked each other. So that that was like a no brainer. Um, and they were young enough that they just, you know, treated it kind of like a play date. My baby and his baby, I had the youngest and we also kind of threw his son who was the baby in their family. We kind of threw him into, uh, you know, kind of where do I belong type of a situation sometimes when we were all together as well. Yeah, well, it's sort of like everyone has their spot in the family or I'm the baby, I'm the boss here. And then you're sort of jockeying for position of like, well, yeah, you're, you're kind of displaced in a way. Yes, yes. It was classic when you read about blending and really wanting to make sure that kids feel so important and, and that they have a spot, you know, it was that classic scenario for us. And so we kind of took a couple steps back. We also wanted to really make sure that we were spending time with our kids on our own. So they didn't feel like the relationship was more important than our relationship with our kids. And that made a huge difference for us. It seems like with that many kids in the house, it would be hard to make each one of them feel special or like they got enough attention or were acknowledged enough or did you find any solutions for that? That was tough. I mean, six kids is a lot of kids. And uh, um, it was a nice time for my older girls because they had just graduated from um, high school. So they were, you know, they had jobs and they weren't home all the time. Um, but yes, trying to carve out time for a new relationship and, you know, having a date or having a date night that was tough. Um, also, we really tried to spend date nights with each child. Um, and through the years, it got easier and easier because each child had their own interests. Um, but there were times that you could just tell, okay, you need to spend some one-on-one. -on -one. And if that kind of arose with, you know, acting out behavior or a kiddo just kind of being, you know, sour grapes, we would make sure okay, we're going to spend that time, you know, with that child for sure this weekend. It makes me think too about how different families have different family cultures. And when you're a kid, that's just sort of the way things are and how you think the world is. But then there's this other family and this whole different culture. There could be room for culture clash, right? 
Definitely. Yeah. I mean, every single family is kind of its own, you know, little mini culture for sure. And, you know, that goes to kind of expectations around the house and chores, uh, what each child kind of gets to weigh in on kind of varies family to family, you know, decision, decision making. Um, also, yeah, I mean, even how we celebrated holidays, you know, that was that was something that was definitely different. Um, and so it's just the list is countless of things, you know, you try to talk about them ahead of time and say, okay, here's, you know, what I think about that, but things would pop up that we hadn't even, you know, thought about yet. Yeah. You can't think of everything. <laughs> you nope. <laughs> How do you get through these? We're kind of talking about the challenges, but what were the solutions in there? Yeah, I think a high level of communication, right? Any book that you read about blending families, you see that 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 basically the parents need a high level of communication. So that was our goal from the get go in this relationship. Anyway, we were like, we want to talk about things, we want to do things in a healthy way. And, you know, a lot of times when we would go on our dates, we would just crack up because we would spend the whole time talking about the kids, you know, mm -hmm. and so that alone time. Um, also, we made lists for each child, kind of what, what were they into? What were they good at? Making sure that we let the kids feel like they grew roots, you know, at our house together um, without displacing each other and, and what we couldn't be a family, you know, without basically. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of trial and error. I mean, we are very upfront with things that we maybe didn't do correctly. And the kids kind of would say, you know, whoa, or no, we don't like this. Or, you know, they were all very vocal. And then the cool thing about parenting anyway, any kind of a parenting situation is you just back to the drawing board, you know, let's, let's try something different. And having to be flexible is like the number one rule for parenting anyway, right? Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the worst mistake you ever made? Um, I think that I didn't initially hold the kids to the same standards. Mm. Um, and you know, your kids get, your kids are just on you, you know, they know immediately. Vigilant. Yeah. <laughs> they know immediately if, wait a second, you're treating them special or you're uh. giving them something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I could see why you'd want to be like that, though, because here you are, new stepchild, and you don't want to be sort of super harsh, like you want to be nice to them. But then it's like, hey, you're not that nice to us, your biological children. What the heck? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Wait a second. You know, do you like this person better than me? Or, you know, um, so my older girls, you know, when you have uh, kids, that are close in age, we had very, very established rules about borrowing clothes, borrowing perfume, borrowing makeup, jewelry. And really it was simple. You just had to ask and you had to return it that same day if you could, if you could. And so for my daughter, my stepdaughter, she was coming in and using some of my things and the girls were on it, you know, like a hawk. They were like, they were kind of grumbling about it, but we had taken a family vacation and I had a expensive perfume. It sounds silly, but it was a perfume I wouldn't buy myself. And the girls always wanted to use it. I would let them use like a, you know, a squirt or two in my room. It was a big deal. Well, my stepdaughter had taken the perfume and she had it in her luggage. And it was this great big deal. It sounds silly, but it was a great big deal that my girls saw it and they knew she hadn't asked. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, they were like, couldn't believe it. You know, you have broke your role, your rule. Well, that was my bad because I hadn't ever told her our rules, you know. So um, also exactly what you said, you don't want to look like you're mean. You want them to like you, you know, and it's, you know our relationship was a little bit more difficult because she was really, really close with her dad and she wasn't really excited about sharing him at all. Mm. So I was just kind of, you know, I guess I call it like, you know, baby stepping. And I did have the talk obviously, because, you know, I couldn't let her just take whatever in the meantime, not letting my girls do the same. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you have to kind of get over wanting to be liked, which is just a human <laughs> thing too, right? 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the big one is like, you know, I don't, I don't know if, if you're going to like me still, but here's what the rules are. Yeah. What about when you and your husband have different ideas about discipline or something, you know, you might've grown up different ways or done things different in the past. And then they're disciplining your child and you're disciplining their child. That seems tough. Very tough. Yes. It's that whole, like you were saying earlier, the cultural, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the family culture. So, um, we did have pitfalls and, you know, when you read about blending families, you say it's their lot, the, a lot of the advice says the bio parent is supposed to do the discipline. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really hard for some people. We, we did have a lot of, um, difficulty. My son had a really hard time in school from junior high up and just stop doing homework, stop doing any of his um, expectations at school. And it was difficult because my husband works part-time at the school. So he was kind of hearing, you know, in his ear about, you know, Coleman, my son. And then what happened was he started taking his things, you know, kind of on his own, thinking that was gonna motivate him to get his uh, work done. Yeah. And it got to me where it was just ridiculous. I came home one day from work. I mean, we had taken his television and his gaming system. And we took his um, iPod. And I was like, we've taken his music. I mean, we've taken everything. The, the, the guy had no joy. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, well, I mean, here I am teaching some of these parenting classes about rewards and, you know, motivational, positive parenting. So we had some difficult conversations for sure. And I had you know, suggested, let's try this instead. Maybe we can motivate them with some positive, you know, and really trying to pour that positive on with kids, no matter what your situation is hard when you're frustrated. So mm -hmm. it would be kind of, we would even kind of practice, okay, what can we be positive about? Let's, let's just praise them for, you know, getting up and getting dressed and getting ready for school. And we started doing a little bit more praise and, you know, it, it changed things. But that was really hard for my husband. He was a little bit more old school and he couldn't, you know, his brain was punishment, not reward. Well, well and sometimes even intellectually knowing things is one thing, but then putting it into practice. So it sounds like he almost had to kind of train. Definitely. It was very, um, you know, it was enlightening because the same thing went for me, you know, with his kids. Um, you know, my stepson calls me the backup as a joke. Um, because he would say, you know, he would call his mom, he would call his dad, and then he would call me if they weren't available. And if he was sick, or, you know, something came up. And, you know, both, you know, all of our kids have had different things that they've gotten in trouble for or discipline for. Um, and then your role, you know, my role as a stepmom is really, I'm just kind of that supportive person. And you're not always asked, you know, if there are two active parents, you're not always asked what do you think? And that's difficult too. Well, yeah, sometimes you have to take a back seat. And I'm sure this thought comes into your head of like, okay, my stepchildren love me, but they love their biological mom and dad more. And that could be, that could kind of feel bad. I mean, yeah, you have to, I think you really have to put your ego aside. And, you know, when I talk to other step parents who I think have done a great job, um, and they, they often will say that, you know, you have to know that you're a, a person in their lives that supports them, you know, kind of a cheerleader or, you know, like I said, the backup bonus, you know, I'm the bonus mom. And yeah. you just have to know that that built in kind of unconditional love um, and loyalty for the bio parent, it, it does take precedence over you, you know. Um, but I think, you know, through the years, I feel really close with my stepkids now. In fact, I don't even call them stepkids. You know, I just say daughter and son. But, you know, it takes it takes a while. It's not it's not easy. People think it's this instant, you know, relationship and, and it takes time and patience. And I do think you have to be really respectful of that relationship with the other parent mm -hmm. because, they're so loyal. They want to make sure you're not, again, trying to take someone else's role. What about clashes with like your partner's ex-partner? 
or you might have different ideas about parenting or different rules, or they feel some type of way about things and don't feel good. That seems tough to navigate. Oh, yes. I, we did encounter that. Um, I think that, you know, the teen years are, are full of all kinds of, you know, difficulties. Each one of wow. our kids, mm -hmm. different things that they, you know, encountered or pushed limits or, you know, broke rules. And, and part of that is normal development. But we did, we had, um, you know, me having the older girls, I'd established really clear um, expectations and clear rules. And then when my stepdaughter started being in the teen years, uh, my husband had never, you know, parented a teenager before. And, you know, um, her mom was much more permissive. So it was, you know, staying the night at a boyfriend's house or not really a clear um, curfew. Um, and those were tough times because, um, you know, she would choose to stay at her mom's where we had a little bit more strict rules yeah. and um you know you just your your goal is for your child to be safe you know we shared all those same goals but there were arguments for sure and it was really difficult because teenagers have a lot more freedom you know there were things that we had to adjust and when you have younger kids they're definitely watching you know well what are you doing with this kiddo because we're going to have those same expectations mm -hmm. you know and we didn't want you know, that, that seed to be planted, that, that our rules were kind of, you know, to be negotiated. We were pretty clear on our rules. Well, and it almost undermines your authority a little bit to be like, well, I'll just go to mom's and then you can't tell me what to do. I'll just stay there more. Yeah. Yeah. We did have that. We had some issues around um, phones, you know, we had rules around cell phones um, and cell phone use, and those were not the same rules um, that were followed. So, you know, just normal kind of pitfall things that that parents encounter, um, especially when you're sharing, when you're sharing the parenting responsibilities. Um, but you're right, it, sometimes it feels, you know, like you're undermined. Um, and really, you have to kind of go down to that basic, you know, what is our basic goal, which is safety, you know, so if you're checking in, you're staying the night at the boyfriends. We're not necessarily pumped about that, um, but you're checking in, or maybe we'd even drive by and make sure she was home safe. Mm. Um, and, you know, the ironic part of that is, you know, she's married now to the boyfriend, you know, what, seven, eight years later. Is that um, in the background? Yeah, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there he is. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it seems like what you're saying is you have to pick your battles somewhat. Like you can't get go in on every thing, but just what is your bottom line? I think that's a great way to say it. Yes, and I think um, a lot of times when you hear about people who are in new relationships or blending families. Kids will pick up on if you feel guilty. Well, and with teenagers, it's like any little thing you feel bad at or insecure at, they just are like zooming in, you know, it's like what they do. Yes. And my, um, I know my stepdaughter, again, you know, her dad would, she would say, well, you know, I wanted you and mom to get back together. And I think that's really hard, you know, for parents to hear. And then it would, he would kind of soften whatever was happening. And just kind of through the natural, you know, through a couple of years of that happening, he had to finally be pretty direct with her, you know, and, and say, you know, I feel like you're using that mm -hmm. as, you know, an excuse. And, you know, acknowledging it, but not letting it guilt you into things is really important because you shouldn't parent from guilt, you know, anyway. And you shouldn't let your kids manipulate you. <laughs> yeah, that one too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. I thought this was a super interesting conversation and I just appreciate you sharing your wisdom that you've learned over the years. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. We appreciate you being real with us. Again, we want to hear what you have to say about topics for future episodes. 
Leave a comment or email bobby at familyess.org. This has been the Parental Compass. I'm Bobby Williams. We'll see you next week. Peace.